Microsoft is making a big push for Windows on ARM with the new batch of Copilot Plus PCs. These are supposed to be a whole new category of personalized computing, separated from those that came before them via their AI features, raw computing power, and epic battery life. And this leap is only possible with the new Snapdragon X Elite processor, which is based on ARM architecture. This chip completely roast comparable Intel and AMD chips, and hopefully truly is a major turning point for the industry, helping to modernize PCs and bring them more in line with current mobile devices and products from Apple. Early indications are positive, showing that the, the hype around this chip is justified. Every benchmark we've seen so far indicates that the performance, along with the power consumption, is noticeably better than current x86 platforms. If you take a look at the new Snapdragon version of the Dell XPS 13, it's advertised as having an unheard of 27 hours of battery life. That's nine hours more than the previous Intel version. So this really could be a major change in the way that we view and utilize PCs. But not everybody is so convinced. One reservation people are clinging to is the potential for a lot of compatibility and performance issues, especially for gaming. The logic here is that the chip might be revolutionary on paper, but in practice, if it's not compatible and can't run your favorite game, then the whole thing is kind of pointless. So let's go ahead and take a further dive into this notion and see if it holds any water. So on forums like Reddit, uh, the predominant theme here is skepticism. People are claiming that Windows as a platform is much different than Apple and you can't just wave magic wand and convert everything over to the ARM architecture. They say compatibility thus is going to be a nightmare. Emulation is going to zap away any theoretical performance gains. And this whole transition is going to take something like a decade to fully complete. But I'm going to be sharing in this video why I think these people are completely wrong. And they're basing these claims not on current facts, but rather previous experiences years ago when Microsoft first had a half-hearted attempt to switch to ARM architecture. This time, Microsoft is much more serious, and more importantly, all the pieces are lining up. So this time, we actually have the hardware, the amazing Snapdragon X Elite chip, and real x86 emulation baked into the Windows OS. And the third key here is the real momentum shift pushing developers to make native ARM applications. After all, the most popular Windows laptop, the Dell XPS 13, is now an ARM-based machine. And I believe this is just the beginning and essentially every popular future device is going to be on this platform, which would be a real incentive for the industry to catch up on the software side of things. But even right now in mid-2024, we have articles like this indicating that everything should work just fine on ARM as is. And there's three main pathways this works. One is by natively supporting ARM, this would be the best solution, but this is the most work and involves developers making an ARM-based version. Option two is a hybrid approach where some drivers natively work on ARM, but the overall application is still x86 based. But option three is just full x86 emulation on ARM devices. And I wanna go ahead and read this next paragraph from this article. Quote, he says developers shouldn't need to change code or assets of their games to get full speed. Most games are graphically bottlenecked by the GPU, not the CPU. And Qualcomm says the GPU performance is unaffected. And while Qualcomm sees some slight hit to CPU performance when it's translating or transitioning between X64 and ARM, it only happens the first time a block of code gets translated." End quote. So as the article mentioned, there will be, of course, a slight hit to CPU performance when running this translation. Ideally, you would want ARM chips to be faster to compensate for this extra computing they need to do, at least initially before we have the compatible software. And luckily, that is the case with the Snapdragon X Elite processor. It has roughly the same performance as Intel's latest Core Ultra 7 on a benchmark test while emulating it from x86. So that means to the end user, there is no real sacrifice in performance in making this transition. And if anything, they're going to get a huge performance boost once apps natively run on ARM. Okay, so that's the CPU and the emulation side of this argument. But what about the, the gaming? So as we saw, compatibility will largely not be an issue, especially as time goes on. But once the game is running, either natively or via emulation, the performance will largely be dictated by the GPU. And so far, it appears that the Adreno iGPU in the Snapdragon X Elite will be on par 
with the 780M from AMD. And this is currently found in popular chips like the Z1 Extreme. So that means laptops with this chip should have the same rough game performance as the new ROG Ally X and other similar devices. Now, of course, this still does put this behind full-blown gaming laptops that have discrete graphics cards, but the performance is really not that bad at all. My Legion Go with the Z1 Extreme was a very capable device and managed to pull roughly 90 frames per second at high 1080p settings for most FPS games I tried. I mean, the biggest thing that annoyed me with the Legion Go was the battery life. It was terrible, especially for something that was supposed to be a portable gaming device. And ARM chips will fix this, delivering vastly improved battery life as we saw with the Dell XPS 13. And now that we know that the emulation and the gaming performance is roughly on par, I fully expect the next gen of all these devices to quickly make the switch to Snapdragon, ARM architecture, and that would further build to the momentum of ARM architecture and help speed up the adoption of ARM native apps. And this level of GPU performance from Snapdragon really should not be surprising. After all, for years, they've been making the leading chips on smartphones, other mobile devices, which in their own right are very capable mobile gaming machines. In addition, the AI integration here is also helping to augment the computing power while gaming pretty similar to what NVIDIA has with their DLSS technology. The tech here is called Auto Super Resolution or Auto SR, which essentially allows the GPU to render frames at a lower resolution, and then it's upscaled by AI to capture all the detail. And much like with DLSS, this enables much higher frame rates than is otherwise possible. So that's the realities of ARM on Windows in 2024. I think it's going to prove a pivotal leap for the industry, and seem obvious and inevitable in hindsight. But let us know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one.